support. Well, look, thank you, Michael. It's nice to be here again, as I've done this uh, a handful of times previously. Um, and thank you everyone for joining. I hope everyone's well. What I thought I'd do uh, today is give everyone an update on uh, what's going on in the commercial aviation industry, um, how the industry looked pre-COVID, uh, how it's in many ways been dislocated and fractured given, given uh, COVID, um, how we're positioned and what we think the opportunity set is going forward. So if you turn to the next slide, I can kind of jump into it. Um, for those of you who aren't familiar with Entrust Global, um, it's a large uh, $19 billion alternative investment platform. Um, been through an evolution over the years. The quick summary is that in recent years, it's uh, focused uh, pretty closely on the category of real assets, in particular uh, aviation and maritime and uh, the uh, investment category of pro private debt, opportunistic credit. And that's really where I fit in. Um, my career and, and background uh, has really been growing up in transportation finance. Uh, my career started at CIT Group, public company in New York, um, where I, I essentially spent uh, 16 years uh, helping to build really a multifaceted uh, investment platform in aviation. Um, my career spanned 9-11, um, as well as the global financial crisis, and it's very much influenced how we look at investing, which is, which is obviously very, uh, very important given the market today. If you turn to the next slide, Michael, please. Including myself, we have a team of five dedicated aviation professionals, uh, all um, with very lengthy careers where we've you know, done everything from lease aircraft to over 150 different airlines around the world. Uh, we had large direct order books with both uh, Airbus and, and Boeing, as well as Embraer. Um, we've been through restructurings, repossessions. We've operated in over 55 different countries. Um, and so there's a whole wealth of experience with the team. And four of the five of us all worked together previously uh, prior to joining Entrust in uh, in 2018. So now I'll sort of jump into it if you go to the next slide. You know, one of the things that uh, frames a, an interesting investment thesis is taking a look at the importance of aviation um, you know, really to the world's uh, economic engine uh, pre-COVID and what we expect to continue. So if you sort of eyeball, I won't go through every, every single piece of, of each slide, but the bottom line is that from an economic standpoint, um, aviation has been critical to, you know, the, the economies of many countries around the world. Um, not only that, but this industry is very large. You know, it's about a trillion dollar industry comprised of close to 30,000 commercial jets. And it's an industry that really requires a large amount of capital, you know, close to $200 billion of capital a year. And what's happening now is that this industry has gone from really the last 10 years leading up to COVID being a very healthy, very resilient investment opportunity to one where liquidity has really been moved to the sidelines and the industry is in desperate need for new liquidity providers. And I'll sort of, I'll get into that as we go through the deck. If you go to the next slide. As I had mentioned, I mean, if you look at the chart on the bottom left, you know, one of the um, attractive features of this industry is that it, the aviation industry itself has been a very large growth industry. You've basically had uh, a compounded annual growth rate of about 5% per year in terms of the amount of traffic growth, the amount of people that travel um, over the last 50 years, in spite of really uh, market shock events. So what we've done is we've sort of layered onto this chart different exogenous events that have happened in the past. And, and you can see in the orange line that in spite of them, people continue to travel. Um, this time around, I'll get into it a little more as we go through this, we expect it to be more difficult um, because COVID has been more dramatic uh, and acute than, than prior market shock events. But we do expect it to come back. And a lot of that comes down to the industry fundamentals. Right. This is an industry where, while this shows a bit of the demand picture, 
the supply side of this industry has been relatively rational compared to other industries in that you really only have two major suppliers, which are Airbus and Boeing. And so in order for the industry to come back to health, which we measure by equilibrium really between the supply of aircraft or seats available relative to demand, there's two ways to address it. Obviously demand, which the vaccine will help with as, as confidence comes back to the market, but also the supply side. And, and that's really where we think the opportunity is. Because remember, when you look at the commercial aircraft types that are out there, it's relatively homogenous. You'll see a slide on this as we go through later in the deck. A number of aircraft, given the issues of demand, are exiting the market. These are older aircraft, older technology, uh, aircraft that airlines have come out and said are no longer relevant to their fleets going forward. So you're gonna see a rationalization of supply. Um, that's gonna call into question um, what types of aircraft people favor. We obviously have a view there. And as demand comes back, we think there's a big opportunity to provide financing to this market at a time when it's dislocated and we have a, a strong uh, thesis as to how the market will recover over time. And you can see on the bottom right of this slide, the operating lease growth, right? Since 1970, this is an industry where historically airlines owned the majority of aircraft around the world. That's obviously changed in the last 50 years. Um, you've got a market now which 50% of the owners of aircraft roughly are non-airlines, financial companies that lease to airlines. Um, if you go to the next slide, uh, Michael. One of the engines people ask around the, um, the you know, the air travel demand growth is really, um, you know, population trends generally, and specifically an expanding global middle class, which is driven largely by developing countries, countries like China or India, some countries in South America. Um, the statistics are pretty startling. I mean, there's about 200 million people a year that enter the global middle class. And they, these are largely people that want to get on an airplane and, uh, and fly. Um, if you go to the next slide. You know, so here's just some historical context, which I think is important. When you, when you look back at aviation and you look at the chart on the lower left, this is an industry where it's important for investors to really delineate between airline investment risk, which has been very tumultuous historically, airlines come in and out of bankruptcy, go through restructurings, and the asset side of investing, whether it be financing aircraft or, or leasing them, owning them and leasing them. And, and what's measured in the, in the table on the left is the historical recovery rate of bonds, essentially aircraft-backed bonds known as enhanced equipment trust certificates where over a period of 15 years, you had a number of airlines file bankruptcy, whether it be chapter 11 or chapter seven in the US. And the historical recoveries are quite high. And oftentimes what I mentioned in investors is when you think, when you take a step back and you look at investor portfolios, having clearly moved from more generalist strategies over, over the past kind of decade to more specialized strategies, move perhaps from more corporate based direct lending strategies to more asset backed uh, lending strategies. The recovery here is the recoveries here historically are well higher than some of those other categories, which we like. And on the right side, the correlation analysis that we've done shows that, you know, aviation is actually uncorrelated to a lot of other areas that investors may have some exposure to, whether it be other real asset categories like real estate or infrastructure or whether it be uh, you know, leverage lending, high yield credit, uh, all the way through you know, MSCI or, or financial equities. If you go to the next slide. So our, our general thesis, um, which we think is, is interesting is in, in a lot of ways, think about you know, what I've mentioned so far. This is an overall industry that's not gonna go away. It's an industry that's been critical to the economies of countries for a variety of reasons for a long time. And you can think about it in some ways almost like the global financial crisis 
and how the you know many banks were systemically important and not going to go away. So what we've tried to basically paint a picture of is if, if you think about what COVID is going to do to the industry is it's going to force a reset or it's going to force a rationalization. Some of that is going to be driven by the fact that airlines can't survive. Some of them just frankly cannot survive through a period where the revenues have been depressed. Um, other airlines are going to be protected from going away by governments that do not want them to go away. And you've actually seen the governments really step up in many countries around the world. And one of the things we try and, and, and paint a story around is if you, if you use the US as a microcosm for how it evolved, we think that that's similar to how the global airline industry may come out of COVID. And when you look at the US airline industry prior to 1978, it was a regulated airline industry and it was quite healthy because there wasn't competition allowed. Airlines could charge fares that made sense. Up until in 1978, the US instituted deregulation. Uh, competitors started popping up out of the woodworks. There were pricing wars. And everybody remembers a lot of the stories around airlines uh, filing uh, or restructuring. And that really lasted up until 9-11 when something else happened in the US, which was consolidation. And the US airline industry consolidated around really four major airlines. And from that point forward, really for the last, you know, kind of 15 years up until COVID, the US airline industry has been more healthy and profitable than it's ever been historically. However, you can compare that to the situation in Europe, which was much more fragmented industry. It was almost like the US when it had first come into deregulation. Even prior to COVID, airlines were going away, going under. And, you know, so one of the things that we think is going to happen is that COVID, in, in sort of a perverse way, is going to force the airline industry to rationalize itself. Um, and in, in many ways, that will mean that as the airlines come out of this, they're going to be, you know, strong. It's, the industry itself is going to be stronger. However, there's a lot of pain that's going to, that's going to, uh, be um, on incumbent capital providers who were long aviation, whether it was traditional banks, uh, whether it was leasing companies. Um, and that, that to us is really an opportunity as we fortunately came into this with a clean balance sheet. If you go to the, uh, to the next slide, Michael, and one more. Now, now this is really the, this, this, the picture. I mean, it's quite, it's quite dramatic. I mean, basically, you know, since COVID really hit, um, the demand for travel has fallen off a cliff. Um, and what that really means is that the global fleet was built for a reality that just doesn't exist today, right? It, it expected there to be a lot more people traveling. Those aircraft obviously are financed in one way or another. Um, and so airlines are either failing um, in which case some of those aircraft may go away forever and, and help rationalize supply, or there's big potential restructurings happening. And, and the thing that's important to note is we've always built our strategy with Blue Sky Aviation on the notion of being flexible, relative value investors. And what that means at its core is that we leverage the, the knowledge that we have in the industry, the knowledge we have of assets, all the sourcing relationships that we've built over the years. And we invest throughout the capital structure of an aircraft. Um, that could be investing in, in debt, could be, could be a senior uh, debt structure, could be subordinate debt, or it could be outright ownership of an aircraft. Um, and this is a perfect market for that because as liquidity has basically moved to the sidelines, we have opportunities to replace banks, and there's a huge opportunity in our minds for a bank replacement model. Um, we have opportunities to buy from banks in the secondary market, as there's been obviously a lot of panic that's ensued from this. And we have an opportunity to, to uh, uh, replace some of the fragmented leasing companies that, that are more or less in a bit of trouble um, given COVID. If you go to the next slide. You just to frame this, um, you know, we, we've gone through, like I said, in, in recent history, obviously 9-11, which had a direct impact on aviation. 
and the global financial crisis, which through liquidity issues had an impact on, on aviation. And, and obviously you can see COVID-19 is, is, is far more impactful on the industry than those two prior situations. Um, and what we did was we basically looked at over 350 airlines. And remember the airline business model is relatively weak. It's not built to sustain prolonged periods of material revenue disruption. So, you know, we've identified at least roughly, you know, 75 to 100 airlines that will have to go away or restructure. But as I had said, there's, there's abilities to take advantage of that. I'll give you one example. You know, we've done a lot of uh, um, investing around uh, LATAM, you know, which is one of the major uh, airlines in, in, in South America. Um, Chapter 11 is a fascinating provision in the US bankruptcy code, which affords airlines an ability to essentially restructure themselves. It's a strategic filing. Um, they filed for it in the middle of last year. They filed for it with uh, close to one and a half billion in, in, uh, in cash. And, and they went out and raised a debtor in possession or dip financing for another two and a half billion. Um, and we participated in that. This is not the, you know, the normal type of investment that we would uh, look to do in normal course, but it's an example of the type of investment that makes a lot of sense. I mean, you're talking about high double digit types of returns for a super priority piece of senior debt that's on the top of the waterfall of the 14th largest airline in the world that was very profitable prior to COVID. Um, and, and that's an example of a domino falling over as part of this bigger restructuring that's gonna take place. And a lot of the incumbent players who had exposures there are now under pressure. Some of them may wanna sell, some of them may need new liquidity, and there's multiple opportunities for us to come in and consider you know, you know, attractive deals. If you go to the next slide, You know, I mean, this is reiterates, you know, what one of the points we had made made earlier, but um, basically, you know, we continue to believe that from a, a, a human propensity to travel, the desire to travel, and also economic growth that's continuing to be seen in developing countries will fuel uh, air travel. So we, we have good confidence that again, not in the immediate near term, but over the next two to four years, you're going to see demand uh, continue to be robust and people move back to traveling. And at the same time, even if, as an example, things like business travel don't get back to where they were because people start to supplement these types of calls with, with travel, you have that supply change that uh, change that's happening. Aircraft are actively being retired. Um, you have situations where uh, airlines and leasing companies have either deferred or canceled orders. So these forces will continue to um, play on the industry until supply and demand get back into equilibrium, which we think will take a, a few more years. If you move to the next slide, this is essentially our, our model, which we update from time to time. You can see in the base case on the top, you know, we expect, you know, it really to take until the end of next year to get back to any sort of normalcy that we that we had in 2019. Um, the vaccine, while announced, um, you know, obviously has its own logistics in terms of distribution. Um, and then in, in all the investments that we look at, we run uh, multiple cases. If you could go to the next slide, Michael. I mentioned, you know, you're gonna have sort of winners and losers as it relates to uh, aircraft. Um, aircraft that are on the bottom uh, represent either older technology aircraft or aircraft that just really haven't worked out, like the, like the A380 as an example. Um, and aircraft on the top, we believe will remain core and, and largely represent the types of aircraft that, that we underwrite. If you go to the next slide. Uh, one more forward. You know, you've basically seen, you know, just a, just a massive seismic yield shift. Um, some of that has actually popped back. I, I would say right now, if, if you fast forward from about this time last year till today, um, we saw the secondary market universe trade uh, public, public types of instruments uh, for aircraft risk 
trade way down. Lease and company stock prices, airline stock prices, uh, public debt that's collateralized by aircraft from you know two to three percent yields up until the double digits. A lot of that has now rallied back in a way that's ex very interesting. You almost have a tale of two markets. On the public side, for 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 aircraft comps, you know, there's leasing companies that have that have been issuing unsecured bonds at sub one percent debt rates, which is remarkable. We we don't really understand how how that really tallies up to the fundamentals issues in the industry, and we think there's going to be long term consequences to the amount of leverage that uh, different incumbent players have put on. But on the private side, you know, where we spend a lot of time you know, folks are still really desperate for liquidity. So we, we really see some big opportunities across loan originations, secondary market acquisitions of bank debt, um, air, ac aircraft acquisitions, whether it be direct sale lease backs with airlines or acquiring aircraft that are already subject to lease that other financial parties need to sell for one reason or another. And uh, if you go to the next slide, this is just quickly, you know, just the state of government support. As I had mentioned, it plays into the uh, to the thesis around uh, this being a bit of a too big to fail type of industry. Governments have really stepped up. We we continue that we we believe that will continue to be the case for uh, as the industry recovers. And then I believe one more slide, one more uh, forward, please. Um, this is really the bottom line. The bottom line is that the major incumbent liquidity providers in this space, whether it be leasing companies or banks, um, largely are, are in some trouble and have moved to the sidelines. And that's going to require uh, new capital providers to come in. And, uh, you know, what we've really built within with our Blue Sky Fund is a hybrid, flexible approach to be relevant across the cap structure. So, I'll pause there, see if there's any questions, but uh, but appreciate the time. Thank you, Michael. So there is a question. Um, can I get a copy of the airline line presentation? Yeah, I can talk to you after, Michael. Uh, we, we just have to um, route it through our compliance. So we uh, that should be fine. All right, Jen, they great. Uh, that is, oh, there's a question coming in about aircraft car cargo. Yeah, I mean, the cargo market's been, the cargo market has been, you know, kind of like the inverse um, situation where the passenger airplanes carrying humans obviously saw, you know, a big drop off, um, but the cargo business um, for a lot of airlines saw a big boom, you know, related to the distribution of whether it be, you know, medical supplies or, you know, increased um, packages that, it, that were ordered. So, you know, car cargo has been, um, you know, a, an interesting uh, opportunity set. Cargo historically was you know, a bit more volatile than than the passenger business. But we expect that to change. You know, we, we think it's now really proven itself to be um, a good hedge for, for airlines to have. I mean, LATAM Airlines is a good example. I mean, they had a, have a very robust cargo business. It's really been doing well through COVID, generates, you know, um, you know billion dollars of revenue a year. So we, um, we think that's a, that's an interesting space that we look at either financing aircraft that need to become cargo aircraft or or uh, or actually looking at uh, purchasing them outright so john there's more questions coming in um but i i apologize that's that's all the time we have today um you know i will forward you these these questions that are coming in sure um, so um, thank you very much. And uh, I'll get back to you on, on the requests for the presentations and all of that stuff. Um, we, we won't be sending out a copy of the, the presentation without uh, John's approval. Um, so thank you for taking the time. Thank you for elaborating on the space. Uh, you have to do things in a smart way. You have to do things that are, are different, um, you know, 
and you're in the right space. I think this is a great opportunity. You have an amazing team and we appreciate Entrust for being involved uh, with Flya. No problem. Thanks so much, Michael. Thank you, everyone.